Hello YouTubers, this is a new session where we get to talk about, you know, uh, some DevOps operations, right? If you are building anything serious, you will need at some point in time to automate the build, provisioning, and release of and deployment of, of the application that you're working on, whether it's an, you know, an API, a front end, maybe a, just a library that you want to publish to NuGet, you know, or anything else that, you know, requires deployment so it can be consumed and used, you know, by other people other than yourself and running it on your local machine. So in the past, we talked a little bit about A.NET, right? It's a simple library that allows you to kind of write C sharp code that gets, you know, generated and then it allows you to kind of, you know, uh, be able to develop scripts, you know, that, you know, allows you to run the build, right? In the past, you'll see almost like a year ago, we talked a little bit about <clears throat> the possibility of being able to run and build end to end uh, software that basically, let's take a look here. So if you look at, wow, that's been, that's yonks and yonks ago, right? So let's see here. Uh, there you go. Building Azure infrastructure with C Sharp. Literally just a year ago, just about a year ago, um, we basically went and said, you know, we want to be able to write a provision project. And this provision project will basically allow us to kind of, you know, a, a take our code and deploy it in the cloud. Right. And we talked a little bit about that running this command line and the command line basically, you know, was all based on, you know, kicking off that provision project that uses uh, uh, Azure fluent APIs to kind of provision these instances. Right. And since then, a lot of things have evolved. Right. As you might have seen, you know, as an engineer, I continue to evolve and develop new patterns and, you know, adapt new platforms and use new libraries or develop existing libraries. Uh, the new thing that's happening here is that I want to execute this exact same behavior, but on in the open source space, securely in the open source space. I want to be able to go and say, I want to provision and deploy to an Azure instance, you know, whatever that is being pushed into my system, right? Let me give you a little bit of visual here, just so you can see what's going on. <coughs> All right. So let's reset this and start over, right? So this is your code. You know, you go and write your code. Okay, your unit tests are passing. You know, people are happy. You went through them, some code review process. And then the code review process have determined that your code should be merged. Okay, so now your code is sitting in this main or master branch. And then once it happens, a new build process gets kicked, right? And we already talked about this. We wrote a.NET script that basically goes and says, go ahead and generate a YAML file that will allow you to kind of run the script and build, you know, these bits. Once these bits are, are built, we can now do two things. We can go and provision, you know, use these bits, like kick off these bits to kind of run a provision so we can cre create cloud infrastructure. So just like this, you're cre creating cloud infrastructure. And then the last, last bit is when you go and say, well, now I'm ready to kind of move on to the next stage, which is to release my code into this cloud infrastructure. So you're building a piece of code, building a container, putting the code inside the container, and then running it and making it available to the entire world. We're going to do that today, right? So kind of grab your tea, grab your coffee, or run this video in 2x like some people tell me. You know, whatever you need, you know, listen in and see what I'm going to try to show you today. Okay, let's revert all of this. I want to start with this guy here, right? The provisioning piece. Okay, we have the code that actually does the provisioning but we don't know how to kick it off, right? We're not, we want to be able to go and run this provision code. I'm going to pick up a project like Tarafu, which is a, a decentralized social media platform. You might have seen me and Josh McCall, you know, talk about this on the front end. And then, you know, uh, Ricardo and Elbic and, you know, all of these good folks, you know, and Mahdi, all of these folks that I worked with in the past, you know, that we're basically focusing on building the back end of it. Okay, well, that's, that's a good story, but... Now we want to deploy that. I want to be able to see all these awesome APIs that Evangeline and Shri and all of these nice people, you know, Christo, all of these folks that have been contributing to this project. I want to see this actually running in a real environment, right? Now, while people have done their due diligence and they basically went in and, and they did the uh, nice uh, building the provision project, the work here is not done, right? Because I need to link that up. I need I need something in my GitHub that goes and says kick off that infrastructure that provision project, right? 
uh, how, how are we going to do something like that, right? How do we go about doing something like that? Let's create a new branch in here real quick. So his users, Hassan, Habib, and then, you know, let's do uh, provision, right? And then I'm going to go and say uh, generate script. So I need to write a script that will go and do the provisioning for me. Right. Just like how every time you kick off a, a pull request, it kicks off a build, you know, to verify and run the test. We also want to kick off a provision effort to kind of update your cloud resources every single time. Because if anyone at any point in time monkeyed with the cloud resources, and we're going to talk about that from a team culture and security standpoint, you want to make sure that your bits actually gets deployed. In order for you to make sure your bits gets deployed, you want to run a check on your existing cloud infrastructure to make sure that they are in good shape. Let's go about doing something like that. Do you see this? So let me uh, kind of increase the screen here for people who want to see the stuff. So I'm going to go to 150. It's going to be massive, but it's totally worth it. I hope you can see this now. Um, so, so here's, let me take away the camera as well. Here we go. Okay. So on the right side here, you'll see this provision project, but we also have this build project in here, right? And this build project has the existing, it's using a.net to basically write C sharp code that will allow you to generate YAML files to run the testing and building and all that cool stuff that's going on. But there's a little bit more to this. I want another script in here, and this new script is gonna help me kind of kick off the provisioning process. Now remember this part right here, this little, this little circle right here, the provisioning process, you know, it has two components, the code that gets built, but we also the actual kickoff of the provisioning. So how do we do that? Let's break this guy. This guy will become basically the host of all the tiny integrations between your ASP.NET Core application or whatever project you're building and the environment that you're living in. So if you're an ADO, you know, you will have different code in here than what you have in GitHub and whatnot. Maybe I'll change the name of it later into tarafo.core.infrastructure.integrations.github. So that will be the name for this project because that's what we're going to do forward with that. Let's create a bunch of services for it. So let's go back here and I'm going to say services as we usually should. And then let's create a new service. And let's call this a script generation service. So this service is just a simple service, no testing or anything. It's just a script, right? It just so happens to be in C sharp. <laughs> and what this service is going to do is that it's going to go and say, here is here is all the capabilities that we can offer because we're gonna we, we need to generate for a build and we need to generate for a provision. So for both of these things, we we need we need to be able to generate. So let's start like this: private, read only, right? And GitHub pipeline, I think something like this. There you go. So this is GitHub or is it a.net pipeline? Let's see. What what do I use in here? Oh yeah, the the pipeline is what I pass in. This is a.net client. That's what I need. Okay. So let's go back here, a.net client is our guy, and here's a.net client, and then here's a little constructor, and inside that constructor, I'm basically going to go and say this dot a.net client equal new a.net client. Okay, that's good. Now we need to generate, now we need to, the existing values that we have in there, which is basically generate build script. Okay, so I'm generating the build script for this, which is pretty much what I have in here, right, with no changes whatsoever, because that guy needs, this is like our version of backwards compatibility, right? We're basically going and saying, here is here is what needs to stay as is without, without any changes. Since this is C sharp, it's a lot easier to detect issues in the indentation and we can fix them real quick. Let's pull in some dependencies in here. It would be nice if there was like one shortcut that pulls all the dependencies. There's probably something out there, but you know, if you're watching this and you know about it, let me know. If you don't, that's okay. We'll figure it out. We'll find out. Okay, so here's a bunch of things that we just did, right? Now, this this here does this part, right? Um, this generation of the script should stay as is but we need a new one well first of all i need to replace the builder in here so i'm going to go here and say this dot adio client 
right? And then I'm going to take this out and then maybe we're going to clean this up a little bit. So let's take this to a new line and maybe add some parameter named parameters. So add argument name like this. And then let's see what else is missing. What else is missing? Yeah, this is it, right? So this should work as is generate build scripts. I should go back here into the system. I should re remove all of this and I should just go and say uh, var uh, script generation uh, service equal new script generation service just like that and then I'm gonna go and say script generation service dot generate build script great so far so good we just kinda cleaned up our code a little bit we just made it a little bit cleaner the second step of this is to go and say I need to do the provisioning so I need to target a particular project and that project is going to be how I'm going to go ahead and build, you know, and run the provision uh, activity, right? So let's take this exact code in here just to simplify things. This exact same code here, all the way down to here. And I'm going to go and do control MO. So it's going to collapse this existing method and the constructors. I'm going to go here and say generate provision script. So this is the script that's going to generate the provision activity. Everything here stays the same. I'm, I'm going to change the name a little bit. I'm going to say provision uh, tarafu uh, core. Okay, and this is good. This is good. You can now do Windows late uh, uh, latest, right? But that will require us to upgrade. And we're going to need to upgrade this library anyway. A.NET now has a version called 2.1.2. And this version is going to allow us to add some parameters and good stuff that we're going to need later in the game. So now I can, can I do Windows latest? Yeah, there it is. Okay, Windows latest, check out, set up the .NET version, no problem, build. And then down here, I want to go and say run task. This run task is important because this here is, is going to be like provision. And I want to go and say run. And in this run area, I want to go and say .NET run project and I want to point to that provision project that I'm in right that provision project is where it's star ruffle uh, dot core dot infrastructure dot provision slash slash or is it the other way around I think let me see what I did in O triple S because I don't want to make mistake in this one uh, if you go into the provision if you go into well, not this one, uh, the the build. Infrastructure, build. Uh, let's see, this is OSSS, right? Yeah. Jobs, whatever, GitHub. Uh, let's see here. Uh, workflows, provision, there it is. So this is like, uh, I need this, I need this exact pipeline right here. Right, so it's it's not exactly exactly the same. It's just something very similar to that, right? So instead of this, instead of O triple S, I want to say infrastructure, and I could swear there's something in Visual Studio that would allow you to go and say um, this pipeline is supposed to be like it it does the slash slash for you automatically. I just don't know why it's not doing it anymore. Okay, anyway, so tarafu.core dot infrastructure dot provision, right? Tarafu dot core tarafu dot core infrastructure dot provision, right? And the exact same thing in here except that's it's like the actual CS proj that lives in here. Okay, so far so good. Here we go. And then the last thing I want to do here is to basically put that in there. So I'm just gonna go and say provision.yaml. Provision.yaml. Right, so that's gonna generate the stuff that I need. This looks so simple and easy, right? And it is, but there is a little bit more to it than that. We need to tell Azure that this pipeline is allowed to do stuff, right? We need to go and tell Azure, hey, this pipeline is allowed to do stuff. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna give this guy a little bit permissioning, right? We're gonna give it some secrets. We're gonna teach it some tricks, and then we're gonna go and, and set it set it off you know, to go build and do great things. Where do we set that? This new version of A.NET has a new thing called environment variables. And it's just a dictionary. It's just a dictionary of key value pairs. 
And what it wants to do with these key value pairs, I'm going to show you here in a second. It wants to go and say, okay, here's Azure uh, client ID, right? And then go and access, this is, this is GitHub's way of being super secure and basically going and saying, if you want to access the secrets, you're going to have to go and call Azure client ID and so on and so forth. Of course, I don't want to type this, you know, for each and every kind of thing that I have in here. So I'm just going to replicate those. This should be a comma like this. Okay, let's replicate those. So what do I what do I want? I want Azure Client ID. I want an Azure Tenant ID, just like we did last time. If you do Control Alt Shift Left, it will allow you to kind of select a certain word, right? Or Control Alt Shift Left like this. So this is Azure Client. I don't know Secret. Uh, we want Azure admin name, and we need another one, which is Azure uh, admin access. So that's for the username and password for your database. You could also use uh, service principal. That's okay too. You, you're allowed to do that. Okay, we have a bunch of things sitting in here. Unfortunately, all of these are not uh, properly done because they don't match, you know, the stuff. At least, at least this is the first one is, but the rest of those are not like this, like this. How GitHub does its strings is that it goes and uppercase all of them, right? What's a good way to uppercase everything at once instead of going and doing that by hand? Again, like I always tell, you know, the people that I mentor. You know, if if you if you take your hands off the keyboard, that means you are a little bit slower now. It's gonna slow you down. It's gonna make you less efficient and all that. Especially when you're trying to fix something real quick. Okay, uh, let's fix that. So tenant ID, client ID, admin name, admin access. What I can do is that if you do Alt Shift uh, semicolon just like this, it will select all the similar words. Okay, then that means I can go and select every word like this, and then I can do, I think it's Alt Shift U. Is it? Control Shift U. There it is. Now everything is uppercase, right? And now someone is going to go and say, but I don't want the secrets to be uppercase, and that's okay. Yes, you're right. I'm going to go and just pick up the secrets and then do con Control U. Done. See, in just a second, even while I'm explaining it and wasting your time and blabbering, you know, about it, you know, here it is just as quickly as that. It's really, really important I understand these shortcuts so you can deliver much faster and be able to fix issues much, much faster. Okay, this is a multi-liner, so I'm going to give it a new line, and I think this is all good, right? Let's, let's test this thing. Let's run it and see if it's actually going to generate the stuff that we expect it to generate. So I'm going to go here and say script generation service dot generate provision script. Put that as a startup project, as already is, and then let's run this. Right, so now it's running, and now it generated everything. If I go into my file explorer, Take a look here real quick. And then here's my bin default .NET 7. Did actually generate the stuff that I want it to. Let's see. I don't see YAML files in here. Build. Uh, is it? I am in debug mode, right? So it should be in debug. And. What am I missing? Let's see. Generate provision script. And if you go down here, it should go and say GitHub uh, workflows. Oh, it should be in GitHub workflows. That's right. That's my bad. So let's go into the folder, File Explorer. And up up by one. And then here is a GitHub. GitHub. And then workflows. And now we have two workflows, right? Let's open them up just to see what we're up to here. Uh, go away. Let's see here. If I open it up in Visual Studio like this, look, it's generating the stuff that I need to do the right stuff. Does the upgrade, the original version, the very first version of A.NET had a bug in it. It was still generating environment variables, so we had to set it up to kind of null. So now it's actually doing the right thing, right? So you don't have to worry about indentations in here or any of that stuff. Just build your c -sharp code and let A.NET do that magic for you. Okay, so we have two scripts. The build, it's already there. The provision, that's where the magic is. But where the heck am I supposed to get these keys from, right? I want a client ID, tenant ID, client secret, you know, Azure, you know, admin name, and then Azure admin access. 
that's the second part about this. We need to create a an app registration, an app in your Azure subscription. And what this app is going to be doing is that you're going to give it powerful access to act on behalf of you, like it's acting as a user, right? It's not impersonating you. It's acting as an owner, as a user, and it does stuff into your Azure subscription. You can't find any role, you know, lesser than an owner to be able to create and remove because this thing is also going to be removing resources, right? Let's head out to Azure real quick and let's make this happen. So here's Azure. I'm going to go with my personal. Here we go. <clears throat> okay. Here's Azure. It gave me a heart attack there for a second. I thought it went back to light mode. That would be that would be a, a big bummer. Okay, let's start with app registrations. So here's an app registration. I'm gonna create an app, and from that app, it's gonna give me all these that information that I need. So I'm gonna go here and say Tarafu Core Provision App, right? So here I'm registering this app. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's the information that we're looking for: application ID tenant ID, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Let's spin up a quick notepad in here. And let's copy that good stuff in there. So I want all of these. Actually, object ID doesn't really, really matter. But uh, I don't know, it just comes in. There, There is a reason for it. There must be, you know, you know, Azure folks, you know, it must be a reason for it. Maybe internal, maybe external, I don't know. You know, my pay grades above my pay grade. I don't know what these things are for. So, okay, I have that information in here. So here's your client ID, tenant ID, good. I also want more information. I want a secret. So I want the client secret in here. And this client secret is going to, we're going to go back to Azure in here and go to certificates and secrets. and just going to create a new secret, right? Let's put it to three months because we don't care. Here we go. I'm going to copy that secret. That secret is right there. Let me hide the camera. It's right there. <clears throat> you click on new client secret and then you create that secret. You better copy that guy because once you lose it, you know, you snooze, you lose. It's gone, right? It'll never come back. If you go and, and switch screens like this, I mean, if you refresh, if you refresh Azure <laughs> portal completely, it'll actually hide it away from you forever. So you want to keep that in hand, right? And then for uh, admin name, we can call it anything really. We can go and say Hassan admin, and then admin access. We can make any any password we want. Let's say you know super duper secret 2023 exclamation you know mark. Okay, so this is this is all our stuff. Okay, now we need to put that stuff in GitHub, right? So first of all, before we do that. Let's give this app a lot of power. You know, let's give it the power to be able to do stuff. So I'm going to go into pay as you go subscription, access control in here. And then I'm going to go and say I need to do a role assignment. And here's a new role assignment. I need to grant access to an owner level. And then the member of that owner is going to be Tarafu, which is the app that I just created. Yep, there you go. That app now has become like the you know, a, a very powerful being or an object in your in your space, right? So if you go and say check access like this, sorry, uh, role assignments, you should see it in here. There it is. Tarafu core provision, whatever, right? That's that's this powerful app that we just created. Okay, great. Let's go put these secrets on GitHub. <laughs> so let's go into Tarafu here. And let's go into not insights. We need settings. And then on settings, I'm going to go to secrets, actions, and I'm going to add these. I already added those before because I'll tell you why. Because, you know, when, when one of these demos come out there, you know, there is always a couple of attempts, you know. And I'll tell you why I, you know, I, I, I didn't succeed in the previous attempt. Let's just remove all of this and start over just to show you, you know, all the good stuff that comes with this thing. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. All of this is gone. Great. Let's add these secrets back, right? So new, new repository secret. I need an Azure client ID. And even though I put it in this kind of case sensitive uh, state, it doesn't it doesn't really adhere to it. This is why we had to make everything uppercase. So here's my client ID. And then let's have another one, which is the tenant ID. 
client secret sure why not let's put the client secret in there and then we want another one which is the tenant ID Azure tenant ID okay and then we also want the Azure admin name I think we called it Hassan admin there it is and we also said we want to add admin secret or admin access right so here's the admin access admin secret no problem okay so bunch of secrets and these secrets will be accessed in that script that I created right now here comes the fun part right so why did I have to do this twice because when I kicked off this script it continued to say I couldn't find actually I'll, I'll tell you something first let's go back to configuration broker here in order for the script to actually find this guy that's the first gotcha that I had I needed to kind of put in you know uh, tarafu dot core dot infrastructure dot provision and then I think slash slash app settings this one is easy this one is okay I already have it in the OSSS like this one wasn't very hard to figure out and I'm gonna rant here for a little bit but it's really really important when you're doing code reviews that you catch these things given that I approved that code that went in it's kinda my fault but pretty much the same thing that I did here in it, it wasn't that hard it just said I couldn't find the physical location I was like okay then this is a, a path issue let me go fix that path and everything is good and dandy just like that oh triple s slash slash app settings dot json no problem there right here's the interesting part though you know in the code in the code it's looking for app settings so who, whoever created that file they created it with three t's and that had me spinning my wheels for a while right I kept spinning my wheels like this is the third attempt right because I had no idea what's going on and then I finally figured out that someone added in app things you know to kind of just you know lighten up my Monday right anyway again I approved the PR my fault no problem there but we should be all set now right we have a generation service we know that it's generating the right things we should do uh, Tarafu core infrastructure Tarafu core infrastructure provision app settings and 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 that's why people say why why engineers have trust issues that's it right there we don't trust anything or anyone because of that exact reason so okay let's go and do provision and then let's go here and say you know uh, 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 implement implement provision script right so that's the script that's supposed to kick in it's supposed to do the magic for us it's gonna access these amazing secrets it's gonna do all that good stuff for us uh, let's see why didn't add that guy in that's weird uh, okay and for some reason when you do that it doesn't let you so I have to do it twice I don't know why but here we are okay so here's provisioning let's go create a pull request here's provision generate provision uh, script right so if I go and create a pull request you know take a look at everything we've done so far it generated the provision core it basically we basically cleaned things up a little bit to generate the scripts and then we created this new script in here uh, this guy still says uh, wait yeah no we, we did this guy right okay so this is good this is the provision script this is all that good stuff okay that's great and then we upgraded a.net and then we fixed the app settings and for God's sake we fixed the um, the the naming convention right that that's one of these things that will drive you nuts you know you have no idea what's going on and the cool thing is that while your PR is still not merged yet, this is the best way we can we don't have today. While we're still there are plans to kind of upgrade, you know, a.net to allow you to kind of debug while you're on your local machine. Debugging pipelines while you're on, lo on your local machine. This guy here is going to give me the the gist of it. It's going to tell me right away whether it's can actually before I actually merge the pull request, 
is going to tell me whether this thing actually works or not, right? We, I think we set everything right. It's supposed to provision something for us. If I go into my resource groups here, just to make sure there should be nothing about Ta'arafu here, because I really want you to see, you know, this running in, in the real world, right? So let's, let's do that. Here we go. Yeah, so, th so this step here that we have here is this step right there. Now we're trying to communicate this to Azure. Like I already have this code done. Hopefully it's done, right? Now we want to kick that into Azure, right? So let's see if that works out. I'm going to give it a refresh there. Yeah, the restore takes about a minute or something like that. It takes a very long time. I, I honestly don't know yet why. Um, if we're restoring everything from NuGet.org, it should be okay, right? It shouldn't take that long, but um, I don't know what else, what are checks and balances that are in there. Uh, there's there's a lot of ways like hackers use to kind of do like a man in the middle kind of attempt and kind of uh, compromise your existing library. Be very careful. Read the author name when you're looking for these libraries, when you're trying to download a NuGet package. You'll find, you know, two packages, exact logo, exact same name with a little bit of changes in there. And then before you know it, you know, the author is different, right? The author could be even the exact same name with just an extra letter, right? And now they get to you. Now you're downloading, you know, a NuGet package that's fully compromised, you know, by, by an attacker. So be careful there. Okay, here goes the build piece. Great, great, great. Here we are. Is it gonna go? Provisioning. Ooh, look at that. I might need to flip to US West 3 though, because US West 2 and Azure these days is freaking out for some reason. Let's see. Yep, that's what I expected. Right? There you go. It's basically saying US West 2 is freaking out. You know, and we can't provision in US West 2. I don't know what the deal is, you know, but you know, it's failing. I'll, I'll do my due diligence. I'll be a good citizen and I'll go here and I, I'll take a screenshot of it while we're at it. And I'll say, hey, you know, I can't provision long running operation SQL. I'll do my due diligence. Here is Azure. Do that. Do do that while you're writing your code. If you run into something like this, just, you know, ping the people. So I can say, hey, Azure support, I think something like that. Yeah. Something is up with provisioning SQL databases in US West 2. Okay, and then they're gonna come back and say file an issue and all that kind of stuff. And I've done my due diligence, right? Okay, let's go back to our code and fix that. Let's go into uh, our JC. I didn't, I didn't actually deploy anything. I didn't merge anything yet, but the, but the, the pull request is already examining that for me. Okay, U.S. West, I guess. So let's go into uh, our plans. This would be U.S. West three. U.S. West three worked with me a couple of times, right? So this it should work. Uh, U.S. West three. Someone asked me this question the other day. He said, you know, why don't you just have one region for all the resources that you create? Why do you have to specify them in your uh, script and all that kind of stuff? And and the reason there is is is, is obvious, right? The reason is because you know, sometimes you want that kind of distribution, right? You, you don't have that option. So here it is, configs, um, uh, consume or deploy to uh, US West 2. Okay, cool. So we did that part. And that should take care of it, right? US West 3, yeah, perfect. So now this should kick off a build again. Right, this new PR because I upgraded that, that should kick off another rollout. But that's great. That basically means that it's actually kicking off and it's going. If I go in my resource groups in here and refresh, look, it has this dev, and it started to actually build things. It just couldn't build a database server for me, right? Someone might say, hey, when something like this happens, can we do a rollback? Like if something fails like this, can we do a rollback and delete the entire resource group? I'm a little bit on the fence with that because if you roll back while you already have existing resources, that means you're going to delete all the existing resources. We don't want to do that. Azure Fluent API is really smart. It'll try to update the existing resource if it already exists, but if it doesn't, 
then it'll just move on. You don't want a little blip in Azure servers like you saw just right now, you know, to be a blocker for you from getting from getting your work done. So hopefully that that will do the trick, right? Hopefully that will get us where we want to go. Here you go. It's doing a restore. Yeah, so so between between this and this is an area that you don't own. This area in red in here, you don't own this area. You don't know what's going on, right? In fact, actually it's more like it's more like this area here, right? Because this is an entirely different server that you don't know what's going on in it at a point in time, right? And you should be able to kind of adjust and try different things real quick, you know, before it's too late, you know, if you're trying to deploy a new feature. Hopefully, cloud systems are a little bit more reliable than this, but this is of course embarrassing. Um, so hopefully they'll take care of it as soon as fast as possible. This is a paid plan too. This is not like, oh, it's DreamSpark or something like that where, you know, I have an old subscription that I'm using. No, this is like, hey, I'm paying you money for this, fix it, you know. Anyway, let's see if this guy goes in. <clears throat> And on this side, yeah, you can see the you know the provisioning happening so smoothly without any issues. This is great. I think this might fail because of US Wister. Let me delete this guy before it's too late. Because if you're trying to create two resources at the same time, like this, it's gonna go and say, hey, uh, West US um, two already have a resource group with that exact same information. So you can't do that. Did it fail because of that? Let's see. Yeah, the resource to see is the provisioning state cannot perform this operation. That's right. So let me clean this up first. And I'll kick this off again because technically by the time this one is done, the other should be done too. So let me rerun this job. Rerun failed jobs. There it is. Yeah, let's let's delete that guy because I, w I want you to see this from scratch, and I also think that if we're going to switch, see, the resource group is in West US 2, right, which I guess West US 2 is happy with it, but uh, we want to get rid of it. So we can start clean, start over. Okay, resource groups, refresh, still in there. It's angry because we sent a couple of requests at it and now Azure is confused. Azure doesn't know what to do. So if you work in Azure, fix your stuff. All right, here you go. Perfect. Now this build here should be good. Yeah. Something also interesting that I noticed about Azure is that if you are if you're in the middle of like just because the re you can't see the resource anymore it doesn't mean that the request hasn't been queued up and the resource still exists out there. So this is another problem. Like it's it's very asynchronous. You know, you don't know whether the resource have actually been created or not until you actually hit that API with the Fluent uh, API library. And that's okay. That's you know that's something that we can mitigate as well. All right, checking out. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. While this is happening, you know, if you want to add another layer of security, it depends on how much security you want to go, right? If you want to add another layer of security, you can actually go into these secrets and attach uh, Azure Key Vault to these secrets, right? So instead of you saving these secrets in a repository, right, which is super secure, I can guarantee you, like, GitHub is already using Key Vault underneath, probably, right? Or something even more secure than that, right? Given that, you know, that, that it was acquired and the company was already offering these capabilities, you know, before the acquisition. If you want to add on top of that, so you want to add Key Vault and then repository secrets, that's also okay. I might do a session just to talk a little bit about that specifically, you know, because that's going to take a little bit of time just to explain how it works. For the time being, if you go in here and type in GitHub Secrets Azure Key Vault. There's this really nice article, right, that talks a little bit about that. You're going to go and create a principle, you know, add the client ID and secret, an app, basically, just like I <laughs> just like I did a second ago. You're basically creating a service principle, and you're using that service principle to kind of, you know, access, you know, these resources and be able to communicate with it and all that kind of good stuff. Pretty much the same thing from a security standpoint. And then you pull in these secrets. Look, my get, my get secret action outputs container name. You start pulling in, you know, these secrets from whatever you want to pull them from. 
I think that's okay, right? I think that's that's one way you can do it. It depends on how secure you want to go, right? I don't know if GitHub will let you sort of, you know, be super secure and just write it on paper and read it from you. <laughs> that would be crazy. But uh, yeah, I, you know, it depends on how much investment you want to put in. Okay, getting closer. Let me take away this camera. Here's the provision. Yeah, is it going to be able to do it? Here's the provision, the resource, creating the plan. Creating a resource group is the fastest thing ever in Azure because you're basically creating a folder. All right, Tarafu Core DB Server. This is where it gets serious. And this is where it takes a little bit more time. Can I zoom in even more? That's, I want to give you the full, yeah, there you go. Here we go. Let's go. Ideally, on a good day in Azure, it'll take about <laughs> I don't know, between five to 10 minutes to kind of get something like this up and running, you know, unless there's something crazy going on. They also have a timeout restriction, right? So if the if the session is taking way too long, it will go and say, sorry, we timed out. You took way too long to send the action that you want to send. I think that's okay. Anyway, we have a DB server. Yay, thank God for that. And then here's the second one. Here you go. And I bet something else is going on here. This is not supposed to say that. This is supposed to say Tarafu Core <laughs> Plan Dev. I bet you our code base is, um, is not writing the right message. But this is just a notification. This is just me. It's telling me, you know, what's being provisioned. So I guess that's okay. We'll fix it as a code rub just to, to kind of get things going. But this is great. This means that it sees the the files, it sees everything. Everything is configured. And then we're going to go check that out, right? We're going to go and see if it actually provisioned all that good stuff for us. Come on. Come on. We can also see it in here. Like, if I refresh that screen, I can see here all the stuff. Look, here's the DB server. It should show me the plan, and then it disappears. And it still it goes into this unstable state until the job is done, because it's queuing all that stuff. Like, as you can see, everything is in West US three west us three that's just a different data center if you want to see how these things look like in the real world so this is azure data centers around the world uh, azure has the the biggest kind of infrastructure but we just need we need it to be a little bit less flaky that would be nice um there it is look how many data centers you know azure has it's crazy so that west us three do they even have it on the map here? This is two. I see West. U there it is. West US. Somewhere in Arizona, maybe? California? Somewhere there, right? So this is where we're deploying now. I usually go with West US 2 because I'm in Washington State. So that's literally like next door. It's like over there. I look from the window and here's West US 2 data center. But you can definitely see the difference. We started having things in UAE and Qatar started having in China, like it's all over the place, all over the place, Germany, all over the place. All right, so where's the provision? Provision is done. So it's basically saying, hey, all your stuff is created. These are the components and the, you know, items that you wanted to provision, right? Is that really true? Let's go back into Azure here and refresh this. Here it is. See, all our components, let me show you here. All our components are created successfully, right? even configured successfully. Like if you go into your uh, configuration, you'll see your default connection string is set in there. So you see default connection. And if you look up in here, you'll see it adding in all the good stuff that you need. There's advanced edit here. It created the exact same database, you know, with the right connection, with the username and password. It's beautiful, 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 beautiful. Everything is happening through the code, right? And that's the power of it. You don't want engineers going and monkeying around in your uh, portal, you want everything to go through code. So you can also recognize people's efforts, right? If, if, if you're following up with this channel, you know about Git file, you know, we try to kind of make everything um, uh, measurable and recognizable through code. Everything happens through code. So now I can successfully merge this because I know it's gonna go and build it and merge it and do all the good stuff for me. 
what I'm hoping for you to understand is that if you're doing it in .NET 6, it should just work like a charm, right? But there's a little bit more research, you know, around .NET 7, how you're going to provision the app and how you're going to make it work. I hope you find this a little bit useful. I hope you find, you know, some pieces of this that you can use, you know, something that you can actually use to streamline the uh, provisioning uh, of of your web app service from from GitHub. Uh, but also, hopefully, you know, soon I'll I'll make another video, you know, that will talk about the release. How do we make the release work, you know, with with versions like .NET version seven seven and stuff like that. Um, if you found this useful, you know, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section if you have any questions. And as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another video. Take care. <clears throat>